So that's how we can use a basic game object. It's going to get a little bit more complicated as we start to add more objects to the screen. And so one of the things we'll start to talk about is the idea of inheritance. And so we can make objects that are based on our, our default game object that have more specific uh, functionality. And so obviously a good example of that is our clouds. So why don't we move on to our clouds and eventually we'll get to our player and our portal. Um, so we have our trees array. Let's make a little clouds array. So we can do the same thing here. So I have all my trees getting added. And so let's add some clouds. So I'll say clouds.push. I'll make a new game object. And I'll add a cloud image. And let's put it kind of up in the sky. So I'll say like 100x, 100y. And the nice thing about this is I'm literally not going to have to change anything. This is all I have to do here. I'm just going to copy this for loop and change trees to clouds. So I'll just copy this and put it here, put it here. This draw function is already written, so I don't have to write image, you know, cloud image. Like I'm reusing all of this code right here. And now I have a cloud in the sky. So I can add some more clouds. I'll just add three. Maybe I'll put one in the middle of the screen and uh, put it a little bit lower. And then I'll put one on the other side of the screen and just kind of put that somewhere. Okay, so now I have three clouds. So now how do I animate these clouds? Before I would have gone in here and I would have said, you know, cloud X uh, plus plus whatever um, with my array. But now that I have an object, what I can do is I can say something like clouds at I dot X plus equals one. So now my objects are keeping track of their own data. I don't have to have these clumsy arrays. But what I really want to do here is I want to remove anything that has to do with how my cloud actually works from my draw function. I want my draw function to really only be concerned with drawing the objects in the scene. And so the way that I can do that is by using a function or a method here instead of actually doing the work here. Okay, so what I want to do is add a new method to my game object to update the position of the game object. However, I don't need my trees to move. So this is where I want to use what's called class inheritance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the basic of idea of the game object, and then I'm going to extend that with a new class. And in that new class, I'm going to add a new function to move my clouds. So I'm going to open up a new tab here, and I'm going to call this class cloud. And it's going to extend. So this is how I tell it to use the game object uh, properties and methods. Um, and then I'm going to save this as cloud.js. So this is like a very specific object that does what the cloud does. So now I'm going to go back to index.html and I'm going to make sure to paste, copy and paste my cloud here. Okay, so now I have a cloud. You might be saying, where's the tree.js? Well, the tree doesn't do anything except sit on the screen. So if I added like bushes and fences and you know any other number of things, as long as they don't move, they don't need to be a special object. They can just be a generic game object. Our clouds are gonna have a very specific type of movement. And so therefore we need to give them um, a, that movement. So to start, I'm just going to replace these new game objects where I have my clouds with a cloud. OK, so I have a cloud here, cloud here, cloud here. That's not going to change anything to start. I did get cloud is not defined. It should work fine. Let's see, cloud. Oh, sorry, this is extends with an S. So yeah, now we see that highlighting. So extends is how I extend the game object. So now, so my clouds are still working. If I look at what a cloud is, it doesn't actually have any code in it. But if I look at my clouds, here's my three clouds. My first cloud, you can see that it has the height, the image, the width, the X, and the Y. So it has all of the properties of our game object. But now uh, it's just a cloud. Um, so we don't even really have to worry about this. So um, you can see the proto. So that's kind of like the prototype. It, you can see that it's, it's based on a game object. Um, so uh, you know that way 
uh, I can inherit all this stuff here. Um, so that's basically how inheritance works. And so now I can add a method here. I can say update. And so in the update, I'll do what I'm doing here, except I'm going to do it this.x plus equals 1. So let's remove this and just say update. So now it's calling the draw function from over here and the update function from over here. So that's the nice thing about extends is we get everything from our original game object plus we get this update function. And so the animation for our clouds is actually a little bit more complicated than that. So let's steal that from our clouds function. Excuse me. Um, so here it is. I'm just going to copy this. And look how much more complicated this code is. So we had cloud positions at i at 0 plus equals 2. This is now just the this.x. OK? Then if this dot x is greater than width plus this dot width over 2, I'm going to switch back to here for a second to make this more visible. This dot x, this dot x equals minus this dot width over 2. And finally, this dot y to add the randomness on the y, random negative 1 to 1. See how much more sane this code looks here than what we had before, where I had like cloud positions at i at 0 plus equals 2. Now I just have this dot x plus equals 2. So it looks a lot better uh, when we use classes. It's a lot easier to read. So there we go. Now we have our cloud animation recreated using objects. So one thing that's nice about an object as well is that we can call uh, functions from the previous function. So one thing that we, you might have noticed is that all the clouds use the cloud image, right? So why do I still need to use an argument? I don't really. So what I can do now is I can uh, update how my constructor works. So I can create a new constructor. And instead of adding an image here, I can just have the x and y. So I can save myself a little bit of code. And now I'm going to call what's called the super uh, function. The super just refers to whatever this game object is. So if I say constructor and then super, I'm actually calling this constructor here. So let's put this guy over here for a second. So now I can put the cloud image in there and then the x and y that I get from my new cloud image. So now I just use x and y here. And then I call super. So super is whatever this extends. So that happens to be this game object. And now the image is the cloud image. And the xy is whatever I got from sketch.js. So now I can go back to sketch.js and take out these images. So that's the nice things with classes. If I have a specific class that always acts the same, then I can just put the image in here instead of with my tree image. Since there are different types of game objects, I need to leave that. Uh, tree image there. Okay, so now we have our clouds. So that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Um, so now we just have a couple more things to add. The player, which is a little bit more complicated, and then our portal. So let's close our cloud class here. And so let's think about what our player does. So it has the image, right? But it actually has three images. It has the idle, the walk and the jump. Okay, so that's one thing we have to think about. One question here when we're starting to think about how to structure our code is whether or not you have more than one player. In my code, obviously, I have one player. So I can create a player class that uses these images, um, the same ones each time. You might be creating a game where you have two different players. And so then what you would want is a class where you can actually use these images as arguments. So the arguments is whatever you want to be different in the class. If something's always the same, then you can just put it inside the constructor. So our player has the idle, walk, and jump images. That's one thing that's different. Then we have like the movement. So the player has speed that changes. The player also can collide with the portals. But we'll, we'll get to, to that when we have our portals. So the main thing is the speed. The player can change position, and the speed can change. Um, and so here, we can look at our code and think about, is this part of the player, or is this part of our game? So for example, in our game, you can see we have, or in our main scene up here, 
we have these events. Okay, so are the events part of the player or are they part of the game? You kind of have to make decisions here about what you think is the case. Then you can kind of see we're, we really are repeating a bunch of stuff like Jerry's walking is true, Jerry's walking is true, Jerry's walking is true. So is walking, is that part of the player? Is that part of the game? So we can start to think about how to, how to change the player. And then finally we have the draw down here. Um, so let's go ahead and create our player class. So I'm gonna create a new file here and save as player.js. And again, I wanna make sure to add this in here. So I'm gonna make a new script, call this player.js. And so this is a new class, player, and ex extends a game object. Our player is gonna kinda of do some more stuff, so we're gonna have our own constructor. And we're just gonna have X and Y here. Um, so we are gonna add a bunch of images here, uh, but I am gonna give an image to the super constructor Okay, because we do need to, it to know the width and the height. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say super, and I'm gonna use Jerry idle as kind of our default image. And then I'm gonna use X and Y, whatever we instantiate from the program. So then our player has uh, an idle, so we'll say this dot idle equals Jerry idle image. This dot uh, walk equals Jerry walk image and this dot uh, jump equals Jerry jump. So we can add all those images to our player after we do the original constructor. A couple other things we need with Jerry or with our, our player now is that we have this dot is uh, walking. So we know whether to draw if it's walking or not. We'll assume false to start. And this dot is jumping. And so we'll assume that's false as well. So those are a couple of variables that we ended up having in our, in kind of like our global scope. Uh, the Jerry is jumping. Then we had the Jerry is walking in our uh, logic. But now we can just put those inside the player. So we're also going to rewrite the draw function. So another nice thing about a class is that if I make a new function that has the same name as this function, it's just going to overwrite it. Um, so I don't have to worry about like it calling two functions. Uh, I know that this draw is going to overwrite this draw. And the reason that we do that is because we have three different potential images. So we have, you know, if uh, this dot is walking, we're going to draw this dot walk. And that's going to be at this dot x, this dot y. Else, if this dot is jumping, and we'll be adding these later, that we have the image this dot jump, this dot x, this dot y, and then finally our default, you know, uh, image is this dot idle, uh, this dot x, this dot y. Um, so that'll draw our player. Uh, so let's put our player over here and let's actually create that. So we're going to need a, a global variable for our player, um, and I'm just going to create it in the global scope and then I'll set it up in setup. Um, so I'll put it down here. So I'll say player equals new player. And we just need the X and Y for this. Um, I'll just put width over two, height over two. And then we can't forget to draw the player. So he's not part of any of our other uh, arrays. So let's just put, actually I'll put the player behind the graphics because it's kind of, looks kind of cool that way. So I'll say player.draw. Okay, so now we have our player, but I can't move him around. I haven't added my events yet. Um, so we're gonna change the way that we do the events for the player a little bit. Um, so let's go over that now. So we're gonna set up our logic as part of our draw function. Obviously we'll be splitting this out to something else later, but for now we'll just put it in the draw function. So I'm just gonna say uh, player uh, keyboard events. Because my scenes are going to be acting sort of differently, I want to have different types of controls. Uh, and so I'll have the events be part of the main draw loop and eventually part of the main scene rather than part of the player. However, if the player was always going to move in the exact same way, I might make the controls part of the player object. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach this, um, and so it sort of depends on the situation. Um, so I'm going to go look at how I did this previously and borrow some of that code. Um, so for my player events, 
Uh, the Jerry is walking, I don't have to worry about that. Um, that's part of the object. So I'll just grab those events and put them in here. So now, you know, I don't have uh, Jerry X, I just have player dot X. And I don't have a Jerry speed variable here. Um, this is something that I might want to change depending on the scene or depending on the map or something like that. Um, so it might not be specific to the player. Um, so I'll make a, a speed here. Um, so I'll say uh, for the player, this dot uh, speed equals uh, three. So player x plus equals player dot speed. And same thing here, uh, player dot x minus equals, so this is for the left, player dot speed. And for the y, player dot y minus equals player dot speed. And player dot y plus equals player dot speed. So there's a lot of different ways to approach this. And when we add new scenes in the next video, I may uh, change up how this works a bit. So for the is walking, now it's player dot is walking. And this is true for all of these. So I'll just copy and paste. And this is kind of repetitive. When we look at our collisions, we'll uh, be able to make a better version of this, but I'm going to skip that for now. And if we're not walking, we have to remember to say player dot is walking equals false. So there we go, we have our idle and then our walking. Okay, so that looks pretty good for the player. Um, so our draw function is a little bit different and we have some events here. Um, otherwise, uh, pretty similar. Uh, game object. And so our last game object is like our portal or what we've been calling a sign, um, something that takes the player from one scene to another. Uh, so that's the last game object we're going to cover in this video. And it's similar to the game object. It has the image X and Y within height and then the draw. The draw is going to be a little different because we do draw that text when the player overlaps with the game object. And so we're going to have to add that code in and we also um, are able to uh, click on the or hit enter when we're on the um, portal to go to a new scene. So we'll set that up as well. So to start, I'm just going to close my player file. I'm going to make a new file and save this as portal.js. And again, I have to remember to always add in my new scripts. So I'm going to copy that and call this portal.js and so we have the class portal and it extends the game object and so the first thing we have to decide is whether we need a constructor um, so I think we do because each portal goes to a different scene uh, and has different uh, text so we do need to add our own constructor so it is going to have the same basics, like the image and the XY. We'll probably want to get the XY from where we create the portals. So we'll do that in the setup as well. And I can go look at my code for that example. So I have my scenes, my signs. So they have like their own X and Y. Um, and then they have their own text. These colors and numbers are actually related to the scenes that they go to. So we're going to replace that with just the name of the scene. So we need um, a message for each portal. We need an X position and a Y position. And then we need uh, a scene. What should we call this? So this is where it's going to go. So let's call this um, scene name. So that's just the scene name that it's going to go to. Well, OK, so we do want to specify with this argument that it's, it's going to open a scene. So let's call this scene to open. So we're going to first call the super and we're going to use the sign image. Um, so you could have different portals here, in which case, you know, you would can keep this as a as something that would be in the sketch side of things, like if you have different images. But 
for me, I'm just going to assign that, assume that we're always using the same sign image. So I'm going to start with the sign image here and then the X and Y. So that goes to the game object. So the image X and Y matches the constructor for the game object. And then the uh, properties that are specific to a portal are the message that it shows the character. So we'll say uh, this dot message equals message. And then the scene that we want to open if the character uh, does enter the portal. So this dot scene to open equals scene to open. So the next part is drawing the portal. And the portal does change its drawing based on whether or not the user or the player is uh, on top of it or colliding with it. So we can we want to update our player before we draw the portals. So then we'll say draw portals here and we'll get to this in a moment so let's create our portals so we can see them and then we'll add to them um, so we have three portals so I'm gonna make another array so I'm gonna say variable portals equals empty array and then I'm gonna make three new portals so I'm gonna say portals dot push new portal and so I need a message an XY position and the scene that we want to open um, so for the message for my first portal, it was like easy snake world. I can actually just copy these values directly in there. So easy snake world is our message. 500 is our X position. Hide over two is our Y position. And then for the scene that we want to open, we won't use this until the next video, but let's just put it in here. So let's just call this scene easy. We just need kind of like something to refer to it as so we know which scene to load. So that's our first portal. Um, let's copy that and make a couple more. And then I'm going to grab the argument. So there's medium snake world. And that, of course, opens the medium scene. Let's put this like this so we can see it easier for a moment. And then a hard snake world. And that's going to open up the hard scene. So these easy, medium, and hard are basically just like labels that we're going to use so we know where these portals go later. Um, so that's a little bit different than how we did it with our functions because we didn't have these objects that we could keep track of. Um, and so then we can draw our portal. So we'll use another for loop. Uh, but instead of trees, this is going to be portals. And so now we can draw. Oh, and I forgot to add an extra parentheses at the end here. Our code is getting to be a little more complicated looking. So we have this parentheses, which is the push function for the array matches that one and then the new portal matches this one and then we have our four arguments in the middle okay there we go there's our signs one of them is maybe over here oh this sign is behind the trees oh and i forgot to update the position of the last one 1000 Okay, um, so let's actually move our trees behind this stuff. And I'll move the portal down just a bit on the Y so it's not covering up all the trees. It's the wrong one. Okay, so now we have our three portals. Um, these signs are kind of big, but you know you can use whatever graphics you want to here. So now we're drawing the portals. So now we have to actually detect the player collisions with the portals. And this is probably the most complicated part of this video. So um, basically, we have two game objects, right? So we have our sign. We have another sign down here and a third one over there. And then we have our player. So our player is a player object. And our portals are portal objects. 
and they we need to know if they collide, right? And we're going to have to know if they collide with other objects as we build out the game as well, like our obstacles, our snakes. And we have our collision code down here between a portal and our Jerry or our player. But we know that we're going to also have collisions with our snakes. So what we can do is say both of these things inherit from a game object, right? The portal comes from a game object, the player comes from a game object. The game object has XY, it has the image, it has draw, but it doesn't have the collide. If we give the game object a collide function, then all of a sudden both the player and the portal will get those collide functions. And eventually when we make some snakes or other obstacles, they'll also have the collide function. So if we want a function or a method to apply to all of the children of one class, then we want to add it to the main class that they all extend. Um, so rather than going to portal and adding a, a collide function here, I'm just going to add it to the main game object. So let's bring the game object over here. And so other than draw, we can collide. And so this is a little bit complicated because basically we'll be able to detect a collision between any game object and any other game object. Some of our game objects, you know, they don't need to do this, like our trees and our clouds, but because a lot of our game objects will need to do this, it's nice to have it as a basic functionality. One thing that we don't know when it comes to our objects is which one is which, right? If we have a sign and a player, they're both game objects, okay? So which one is colliding with which? Well, the way our collision code, it doesn't really matter. It could be this one, it could be this one. All we have to do is put one of them into the argument for the collide code and then detect the collision. Because they're both rectangles, it will be the same uh, code. So we need, if we want to detect an argument, or if we want to detect a collision between a portal and our character, we just need to put the player inside of this collide code. So we're going to be detecting this with all of our portals. So we're going to say portals at i dot collide. And then we'll put the player inside that argument so we can detect if that portal collides with that player. Because it's in this for loop, it'll go through each one of our portals. So for that argument, I'm not going to call it player because we might want to detect collisions between other parts of our scene in the future. Like if you had a scene with like boulders bouncing around, they would have to collide with each other as well as the player. So for the collision, I have the game object, which is this, and then I'm going to have other as the other game object. So I'm just going to use other as the argument. Then I'll do my collision detection. So I'm going to say if, and I could copy this code, but it's actually you know using all these other variables that we don't want to use. So we can just work it out again. So so I'm just going to bring up a, a blank screen so I have a little more space to draw. So we have our sign, which is this. And then we have our player, which is other. And we want to detect the collision. So the center of our sign is x, y. And then it's got the width and the height. The center of our player is x, y. And it's got its width and its height. So the first thing that we want to detect is um, the x position uh, of the the sign. Okay, so we start with x, right? This dot x, and then we got to get this line over here. So that's minus this dot width. I'm just going to do w over two. So this line, this one has to be um, less than the other's right line, okay? Because if this left line is over here, then we know that this box is over here somewhere, and so they're not colliding, okay? So this one has to be less than, and then we just do other dot x plus other dot width over two. And then we just keep going from there like we did in the other video. So then we say this right line right, has to be greater than this left line. Because what we see right now is if this right line is less than this one, 
then the boxes aren't going to overlap, right? We know this entire box is to the left of this box. So this dot x plus this dot width over 2 is greater than other dot x plus other dot width over 2. And the rest of it is basically you know, the same as what we saw in our um, other video. So I won't go through all the y's because it's just the same thing. So we have this dot x minus this dot width over 2 has to be less than, and this is going to get kind of long, so let's go to this view. That has to be less than other dot x plus other dot width over 2. Then we do the double ampersand, we go to the next one, and you know we're basically just reversing this pattern. So we're saying this dot x plus this dot width over 2 is greater than other dot x minus other dot width over 2. Okay, so notice the symmetry there. We have the two boxes, they both have an x and y, they both have a width and height. So this dot x minus width over 2 less than other dot x plus, and then we basically have the exact opposite as our second parameter. Then we do the same thing on y. This dot y minus this dot height over 2 is less than other dot y plus other dot height over 2. And last one, this dot y plus this dot height over 2 is greater than other dot y minus other dot height over 2. Okay, so it's still kind of tedious, but it's basically the same code. So one trick with object-oriented programming is that once we're in this game object, we don't really want to do any code here because this object is really only supposed to kind of deal with its own business. What we really want to do is tell our main program what the answer is, whether or not these two things collide. And we can use a return statement with this function just like we would with any other function. So if this collision occurs, if all this stuff is true, we can just say return true. So that will tell our main function that yes, this collision happened. Else, we can just say return false. And this code is always going to be basically exactly the same. So, you know, if it doesn't quite make sense, just copy and paste this, just go with it, and eventually you'll start to work out how this works. So I'm going to put this back over here. And so this is going to either return true or return false. And so what we want to do is, uh, you know, this collision is going to resolve to either true or false. So we can put it inside of an if statement. So we can say if portals at i dot collide with player, then we can, you know, do whatever the portal is supposed to do. So we can display the text. So we'll say portals at i, and we can have like a different function for this. We can just call this uh, draw text. And so we can go back to our portal and, you know, we already have the draw function just to draw the image. If we collide with the player, let's draw the text. So let's make a separate draw text function. And so we'll just, uh, let's just copy what we had in our sign function here. So we have all this stuff here. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. So we have fill is 255, text font is Comic Sans. Um, this is actually always the same. So instead of having this happen all the time, I'm just going to put this in my setup function. Otherwise, I'm just repeating this over and over again. It's not really very useful. Same thing with the text align. I don't need to repeat that in my object. That would be, you know, I would need to do that if I was changing fonts and stuff like that throughout my scene, but I'm not doing that. Um, so I'm not, so I'm going to take that out and put it in setup so it just happens once. But if you are using multiple fonts or changing the alignment, then you should leave that in there. So then we have our text. So we have our message. So I'm going to change that to this.message. And then, oh wow, there's a lot of, let's go here. So there's a lot of stuff in here. This is actually going to look a lot better by the end. So instead of x, we have this.x. Uh, but the nice thing here is instead of sign image.width, we just need this.width because we know the width. So then this dot, then y becomes this.y. Image becomes this.height. Um, this is just this.width. And this is just this dot height. So again, using objects, we see that our code starts to look a lot more normal and make a lot more sense. Um, so finally, we have hit enter to play. 
and we just have to update to this.x and this.y. So let's see if that worked. I'm gonna go back to the project and I just have to move the player in front of the sign. And hey, that worked. That I was kind of expecting there to be an error, but that actually works. So we have hard snake world, we have easy snake world, and we have medium snake world. So they all, they all pretty much worked, so not too bad. Um, hit enter is not gonna do anything. Um, that's kind of the last bit that we need to do. Um, we haven't actually created our other scenes yet, so that's gonna happen later, but we can at least write the code that will make it work eventually. Um, so if we're colliding, we draw the text, and then we have to detect if the user is hitting enter. So let's just say enter event here. And so we can say if key is down, and the key we're looking for is enter, then we're gonna you know, change the scene. So uh, that part of it we haven't actually created yet. Um, so that's what we're gonna do in the next video. For now, I'm just gonna put a comment here and say change scene. Um, and one thing that we are gonna need to know is what the scene is, and that's the scene to open here. Um, so we can get that uh, from our portal. So let's just say uh, so the code for that would just be portals at i dot scene to change scene to open. So we can get that label. So each portal has its own scene to open, right? Like the first one is easy, the second one is medium, and the third one is hard. So that information is saved in each individual portal. And so as we're looping over the portals down here, we can look at which one to open. So I think that's probably enough for this video. There's a lot of new stuff in there. Um, we covered both uh, classes, objects, and uh, class inheritance. Um, so there's a lot of new uh, stuff to work on. In the next video, we'll be um, adding a new type of class, which is the scenes. We'll make a class from our scenes, and eventually that'll be make it easier to switch between uh, different scenes in our game as well. Um, so now that I'm at kind of a stopping point, I'm just gonna go over here and just say adds um, classes and uh, commit to master. So for now, I'm not gonna add a link uh, to the new project yet because I haven't quite finished it. Um, so I'm gonna wait until the next video once I get through that.